In my last video, I created a plugin that allows you to randomize the colors of parts. So if I click this button, as you can see, it randomizes it, and then I can press undo to undo the color change, or redo to redo the color change. Now, this plugin was really easy to make, but I'm going to take it to the next step by adding a dock widget plugin GUI. Now, if you don't know what a dock widget plugin GUI is, it's pretty much plugins like these that you can dock on your screen, you can scale them, and they fit pretty much every studio size. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we're going to create a folder in server storage. I'm going to name this folder color randomizer 2.0. Then I'm going to add a script and I'm going to name this script plugin because this script is going to handle all of our plugin stuff. In my last video, I created a toolbar and a button. So let's go ahead and do that here. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain this if you didn't see my last video. So the toolbar is the thing that appears up here, all these buttons right here. And the button is actually the thing that you click. So like stuff like this. So what we're gonna do is actually change the button right here, the name to colorize. So we know that it's going to colorize that stuff. And then we're gonna change the toolbar name to color randomizer 2.0. And we're gonna even change this to script.parent.name. And then if we go ahead and save this as a local plugin, we should see this appear over here. And as you can see, it says color randomizer 2.0, which is the name of the folder. And then if we click colorize, nothing happens, but the button is there, so it is working. So what we're gonna do now is connect a click event to the button and print clicked whenever it's clicked, just so we know that the button is working. So let's go ahead and override our plugin. And now if we go over to the colorize button, it says clicked. Perfect. Now I want to take this plugin the next step further. So let's go ahead and learn how to create a doc widget plugin GUI. So on the Roblox documentation, I'm just going to search up doc widget plugin GUI. Now, as you can see, it says plugin create doc widget plugin GUI. And this is what we want. We want the method to construct it. So let's go right here. And now in this code sample, we can literally just copy all of this right here and just yoink that code. No shame in stealing code. So let's go ahead and right click, save as local plugin. And now, as you can see, this code created a button that just says, click me. So this is actually really cool. And this is a widget right here. Now this widget is really bad and it's really simple, but we can take this way further. So in the script, let's just go ahead and we will get rid of the button right here. Not the dock widget though, we want to keep that. And we're also going to just adjust these properties right here. So instead of enum.initialdocstate.float, which leaves it floating in the air, we want to change this to left. Then widget will be initially enabled. This keeps it on whenever you load in studio. We don't want that. So set that to false. Don't override the previous enabled state. Basically, this means uh, it will always load in as this right here. So if it's set to true right here, and then this is set to true, then it will always be enabled, which is so bad. Never do that. And then we have the default width of the floating window. And that basically just keeps it like that when you load in. Uh, default height, same thing. And then the minimum height, that's a, that's the a smallest that you can go to make it. And all these settings are pretty much fine right now. We'll change them later on, but this is the only ones that we wanted to change. Then we're going to change the test widget name to just widget. And then change the name to colorize widget. Then what we can do is whenever the button is clicked, we can actually drag this code right here, down here. And then instead of printing clicked, we'll just set the widget.enabled to not widget.enabled. This right here is going to toggle the widget. So if we go ahead and right click, save as local plugin again, save this. And then if we go over to the button and click on it, as you can see, it opens the widget like this. So we can toggle the widget, we can parent it down here, and we can just keep toggling it. Now studio is a little buggy, so it does that, but it's all right, we can fix that. Uh, then what we're gonna do is change the widget title. So if you don't know what the widget title is, it's this thing right here. 
uh, the text that appears at the top of it. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. Like, as you can see, whenever you select something new, uh, the properties thing, which is also a widget, it changes the title of it. So we can do that. We can do widget.title equals select parts, like that. And we can save the local plugin again. So now right here, if we press colorize and open it, it says select parts. And now what we want to do is get the selection service. So we'll get all the services uh, before the plugin is actually created, just so it's faster. So I'll just create a couple comments to separate it. And we'll do local selection service equals game get service selection. And that's the only service that we need right now. So what we'll do is we'll connect an event to the selection service. So selection service dot selection changed. And then we can connect a function to this. We'll do widget dot title equals selecting. And then we want to put a number in here. So let's change the quotations. Let's change the quotations to this type of quotation right here, which is kind of hard to see, but I'll put it on the screen right now. And we'll put the brackets, and then we'll put selection service get like this, and we'll put a hashtag like this. And we can actually move the selection right there and just put selecting that parts. So what this will actually say is selecting the number right here. It won't include the brackets, just the number and that many parts. And then we also want to check if it's not that many parts. So let's just put this right here. Local selecting equals selection service get. Local select amount equals hashtag selecting. And selecting select amount parts. But we don't always want to change the title to that. We want to do if select amount is greater than zero, then we do this. Else widget.title equals select parts. Now we can save this as a local plugin. And now if we open the widget and click on something, it says selecting one part, selecting two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts. Perfect. So now we have our very basic title system set up. Also, we could check if the select amount is one. So we can also do right here, if select amount is equal to one, and then just else if. Perfect. So now if we right click, save as local plugin, we fix that one only kind of interfering thing, selecting one part, selecting two parts, and we have the correct formatting. Perfect. Now we actually want to add a frame that we can click to colorize the parts. So let's go ahead and create a GUI in starter GUI. And then we don't have to change anything about this GUI because it's only so we can visualize what we're making. So what we're going to do is just scale this up. This will be the container frame. Set the background transparency to 1. Or you can set it to just completely dark. Pick a screen color just so you can see what you're making. Then. I'm just going to add a text button in here. This button is going to go in the middle, but instead of dragging it to the middle, I'm going to set the anchor point to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and change the position to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Then we can change the size to, let's say, 0 0.75, 0 0.750, 0, just like this. And now we could do this way, or we could set it to 1 and then give it a UI padding. And then set the padding bottom to like 0 20 copy this and now it will have a 20 pixel uh, offset now if we drag this into the color randomizer we can actually clone the frame into the widget so local frame equals script dot parent dot frame and then frame dot parent equals widget and now if we save this again we can go to colorize and now we have a button now, as you can see, the button is really big because we forgot to actually change the frame scale. So we want to change this to 1010. And then we can resize, uh, we can resave this again. So as you can see, we have this. And when we scale it down, it also scales down. 
and it keeps the same offset as small as you go. So that's cool. Now we can change the text to colorize. We can change the text scaled. We can change the font to Gotham SSM. Just put it back here and we can visualize it. Change it to bold. We can make it a little darker. Change the color to white. And the auto button color is really, really bad on here, but I think it'll be fine when it's really small. So we'll just change the randomizer again. Now if we press colorize, it opens this up and we can colorize the parts. This is a really basic GUI, but now we can, instead of using the button right here, we can just use that as a widget and then use this button in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do frame dot text button dot mouse button one click connect function. And then this is where we can actually do the colorizing. So we'll actually make a function for this function colorize and then connect the function right here to colorize. And then we also want to get the change history service up here before we do anything else, because this is going to be the undo and redo button. There we go. Now we can get the selection, local selection equals selection service, get, and then we're going to make a waypoint before all this. So change history service, set waypoint. We also want to make a waypoint function. And I'll just set this as colorize. So we'll just call the waypoint function before and the waypoint function after. So this will be the undo button right here and the redo button. And then what we want to do is for every selection. So for IV in selection, do if V is a base part. So we're checking if it's a part, then V dot color equals brick color dot random dot color. Now, if we save this as a local plugin again, and then we just go ahead, select these parts, go into the colorize plugin and press colorize as you can see it, it colorizes and we can undo and redo perfect so our plugin is working now that's pretty cool so now we can actually keep this like down here and then we can just go about our day we can use we can add a part right here press colorize and it makes it a lot faster to move around and just makes it a lot more efficient so yeah uh now i was talking about making this actually um make me make you money so let's go ahead and do that uh, what we're gonna do right click publish as plugin and then we can go ahead and distribute on marketplace for a price of doesn't really matter I'll put a hundred and if somebody buys that that'd be amazing you should probably do it lower if you're doing something like this you could do like 10 but the minimum price is a hundred so you can't really make bad plugins and publish them for money but you can make good ones anyways I'll submit that and now you can, I'll leave this link in the description. If you guys want to get the plugin, it would help support me out. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and join my Discord server. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.